opportunity to turn in the Kane County Cougar forms. So if you have any questions, ask my mom. All right, um, any other announcements? No? Okay. Our scripture reading today is taken from Proverbs chapter 31. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above her duties. The heart of her husband safely trusts her, so he will never, so he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you have sell them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and that her works bring praise at the city gates. Again, that was taken from Proverbs chapter 31. And so, I know Max says I'm going to announce the hymn, but I found a cute call, or prayer online, so if you guys could just join me in prayer. Dear Father, we approach your throne on behalf of mothers whom you have entrusted the care of your most precious little ones. We thank you for creating each mom with a unique combination of gifts and talents. We thank you for the sacrifice of self each mom gives for her children. For the late nights spent blocking infants, for the hands calloused from washing, wiping, scrubbing, mixing, gapping, stirring, hugging, patting, disciplining, holding, writing, erasing, painting, and pouring. We thank you for the gift of time moms give for their kids, whether it's stay-at-home moms, working moms, or moms have some combination of the two. We thank you for the flexibility of mothers, for their tirelessness, their perseverance, and their devotion. We pray you give each mom strength, help her to see in every mundane task the eternal cosmic significance that you have placed on motherhood. Help her to understand that the most radical, world-changing events may be happening anonymously in her home. Help her to forgive those who undermine her significance. We especially pray for single mothers who must lean solely on you for fathering their children. We thank you that your big arms surround children who may never know their earthly father. We also pray for mothers who never had the honor of bearing children, but whose nurturing extends to the many poor and needy who cross the threshold of their lives. We ask that you be the daily bread of tired mothers. We ask you be their living water. We ask you be their source of spiritual and physical strength. We pray that the same grace that flows from Father to Son in, in, to us in salvation will flow from mothers to their children. We pray that each mother rejects perfectionism and instead embraces the goodness of the gospel. We pray the rhythms of repentance and forgiveness shape every home. Lord, give, give each mother a worshipful reference of you, the creator and sustainer of life. Help each mother to rest in the knowledge that they are the stewards of your children and that only your spirit can produce change in the hearts of each blind girl. May each mother find rest in you. And most of all, Lord, on this day, which we honor mothers, may we love and cherish the special women who have borne us, who have nurtured us, and who have prayed for our well-being. May our hearts overflow with gratitude to you, who formed and knitted each of us in our mother's womb. Amen. All right. Please stand and join me with today's opening hymn, A Mighty Fortress, number 43.
today for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we want to come to you today for a special blessing. A special blessing upon mothers. For Father, today we celebrate mothers. And God, as we do so, we ask that your Holy Spirit would touch and bless each mother. Lord, as Shannon said in her prayer, bless especially those who have not had children, that can nurture, love, and care. And God, we thank you not only for mothers, but for grandmothers, great grandmothers. Father, we, we just give you praise because when you created mothers, you created them with a special job. And so, Father, today we give you praise and honor because you have created for us something so special, mothers. God, may your blessing be upon them, upon the message today, upon our service. And God, that you would be blessed according to all the riches that are in glory today. May your presence be in this service, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, the message in the, in the bulletin says, heal me, help me, hold me. I'm changing that. I wonder, you, it, well, that was a surprise, wasn't it? Totally. No. Totally. Ezekiel chapter 19 verse 10 says this, Thy mother is like a vine in thy blood, planted by the waters. She was fruitful and full of branches by reason of many waters. Now, when we read that scripture, we oftentimes think that that, that scripture refers solely and wholly to Israel. But that scripture doesn't just refer to Israel, it refers to moms. Now, I don't know whether or not you, you guys understand, but uh, we have uh, a, an, an older daughter who will be 50 this year. We're not old enough to have children that old, but she's that old. So one day she was rather upset with me, and she told, told me that she was going to leave our house when she was old enough, change her name, declare she never knew who I was, and she would be free from us. And I looked at her and I said, well, that's fine, go right ahead, but what I'd like you to understand is you can change your name, you can change the color of your hair, you can move out of the country, you can tell everybody in the world that you don't know who I am, but there's one problem that you're going to have. And she said, what's that? I said, my DNA will always be in your veins. The scripture that I read this morning is that the mother, the vine, the mother is like a vine in your blood. Now, whether or not the mother is genetically yours or not, mothers don't have to be mothers by genes. Mothers can be mothers by a different gene called love. Mothers love us beyond our comprehension. Mine did. Uh, my mother actually thought that my name was Jesus. Didn't she, Mom? She really did. She thought I could do no wrong. Until... I became a pastor. And she'd come to visit us where we were pastoring, and a, one of the gentlemen who was uh, instrumental in me coming to the Lord, actually, was there and told the story about me being arrested. And my mother stood up in church and said, Oh, no, he wasn't. <laughs> so John Epling had to proved to my mom that I had been arrested for grand theft. 
Long story short, charges were dropped, yada, 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 and all that. But my mom would not believe that until she actually saw the, the report. And Mr. Eckling happened to be the prosecutor at the time when I was arrested, and he was going to make an absolute example out of me. And thank God that his wife, Christine, thought there was something inside me worth saving, and so she went to bat for me. And I didn't go to jail. I wasn't, didn't go to court. The charges were all dropped. But mothers love beyond comprehension. Mothers' hearts are sometimes as tender as a little bitty piece of, of snowflake. But mothers are so resilient that they sometimes are resilient beyond what they need to be. The mother here is... One of, one of the things she produces is fruit. Good fruit always results in what? Praise to God. Good fruit always results in praise to God. We, we scratch our head all the time and think, how did our children become good adults when we're the ones that raised them? At least I feel that way sometimes. <coughs> You know, I, I look at my kids and how did they grow up? Stella and I were at a uh, restaurant yesterday with our uh, two of our daughters and their families. And uh, our, our youngest was here uh, last two weeks ago. Uh, and we, we kind of celebrated whatever we had to celebrate with her. But we were there. And, and I had gone into the restroom. And, and as I was in the restroom, I, I got this incredible thought. God, how did I do it? How did I become the father of the smartest kids in all the world? How many of you have all had that thought about your children? If you haven't, you will. I promise you. If you haven't figured it out, they are the smartest people in the world. Isn't that true? How many of you uh, seniors here today understand that's true? Yeah? yeah? They are the smartest in the world. Well, Proverbs 29 15 says if she draws the line, there comes a time when the, when the mother will draw a line and say, don't you go across that line. How many of you have ever done it? Listen to what it says in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 15. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but the child left by himself bringeth the mother to shame. The kind of mother that the Lord commends in his word is the one who will not allow just anything to take place. She expects and demands things out of her children that a lot of people don't expect out of her children. Don't, don't you, moms, now be honest with me, don't you expect something out of your children that maybe they don't get once in a while? They have high expectations in their offspring. You know what I thought about when, when our children were real little? I had their lives planned out like a book. That book went in a trash can real quick. Especially when they start graduating from high school and having boyfriends. Now that's the last thing in the world that a father wants to talk about with daughters. His boyfriends. But mothers expect more out of their children. They expect things out of their children that they ought to expect. You see, Scripture says this. God scourges every son whom he received. Have you ever heard this, the proverb that says, if you spare the rod, you'll... 
How many, how many children in here have been, have been introduced to the right hand of fellowship to the seat of understanding? We all have that. But can I tell you something about that? It's okay. Even though the federal law today and the state law and the local law says you can't discipline your children, I would rather go to jail for spanking my child and bringing them into the discipline that they need than allowing them to go however which way they want to go. Wouldn't you? Didn't you? Haven't you? Hmm. She turns to the deliverer. The woman turns to the deliverer. Have you ever heard the Old Testament story about Hannah? Hannah, in 1 Samuel, says this, that, Lord, if you'll give your handmaiden a child, I will give him back to you forever. Has anybody ever heard of the lady named Susanna Wesley? Susanna Wesley was the mother of John Wesley. And when John Wesley was getting ready to go into the mission field, she, he was coming from England to Georgia. And someone said, well, aren't you worried about that? Don't you, do you want him to go? Why would you let him do that? She said, if I had a hundred sons and they were going into that field, I would soon as give them up to that as to ever see them again. Although I might not see them anymore in this world, I have the knowledge that I will see them in the next. Mothers teach a dependable book. Now, when I was growing up, my mom taught me how to read the Farmer's Almanac which is real helpful if it comes to, you know, getting rid of boils and those kind of things. But this lady taught her children this, and we all both taught them this book here. This is an important book to be taught. It's more important than the Farmer's Almanac. Do you know why? Because the Farmer's Almanac cannot lead you to eternal life. Only this book can lead you to eternal life. She teaches the venerable book. Why is this the mother who teaches the word of God to her little ones? It's impossible to start too early reading the Bible to them. When they are older and more mature, you can explain doctrine to them. Listen to what the psalmist David said. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Psalm 119. She triumphs. In difficulty. Exodus 2 3. You all know the story of. Uh, can anybody pronounce Moses' mother's name? Does anybody know Mo Moses' mother's name? Well, then I'll just call her Jew. <laughs> it's Jehochebed. Jehochebed. The mother of Moses. All around her. All around her, they were killing children. The Egyptians were killing children because they, they didn't want the Jews to multiply anymore. So Moses' mom took him and put him in a, in a homemade yard, put pitch on it, wrapped him up real good, and put him out in the reeds so they couldn't find him. But lo and behold, guess who found him? Pharaoh's daughter. And she says, Oh, look at that cute little kid. I think I'll take it home and play with it. God's providence was really pretty neat. You know what God did? God made it so Moses' mother would be a hired servant now to take care of her own son. She was paid to take care of her own son. But she went to pretty deep extremes to save him, didn't she? Moms and dads, we all do that. You see, the mother of Moses in the providence of God was chosen as a paid nurse to take care of him. The sovereignty of circumstances. I have a math question for you. Joyce, you can't answer this. But this is a math question. We have 
ten people at dinner. Mom and dad and eight other people. And there's one pie. How many pieces of pie will there be? How many? Nine. You get, you get the prize. Nine pieces because no matter how good the pie is or how much mom would like to have a piece of that pie, mom always says, no, I don't want any thanks. That's what moms do. Moms go beyond. She triumphs over difficulty. How? Because she's willing to give what sometimes others wouldn't even give. It, it, it's, it's really a blessing today, Arlene, to see all your families. Uh, it, it's, it's really, really good. Because I have an idea what that lady gave up all her life. Much like what I know she gave up. Much what, like I know what Jan's given up. What all of you have given up for your children. And to have, to have children come beside you and and just hold your hand. Just, just to have children come and say, wow. Do me a favor. Come read that now. Mother's Day, Emma. In the 18 years I have been out here on this earth, I have learned so much from you. You have taught me forgiveness, faith, and loyalty, just to name a few. Thank you for teaching me these things and more. And I still learn from you every day. I love you more and more each day. Stella was going to share that with you later, testimony time. I want you to know something. When God created mothers, He created them, and He put so much in them. And on the sixth day, when he had just finishing up, the angel of the Lord came over and he said, See, I told you, you put too much in her. She's leaking now. God looked at the mother and he says, What do you mean? Well, look, she's leaking. And he said, That's not a leak. That's a tear. And the angel says, what's the tear for? Well, the Lord said the tears for joy, for sorrow, for laughter, for happiness. The tear is so those tears can water the faith of their children. Moms, how many tears have you shed over? Yes, she triumphs over difficult situations, I'm sure. But she also tells a story. The story that mothers tell is the story that took place on Calvary. Remember when Jesus was on the cross? And he looked down to John and he said, John, take care of your mom. She's not my mom, Lord, and she's your mom. He was making sure that she was taken care of. One.
one of the things that really moves me is those of you who had your mom there's nothing any more exciting than for you to go and put your arm around your neck and say hello. There's nothing more that a mom wants than to have that that hug around her neck. She tells a story that took place on Calvary. Not just that Jesus said, "This is this is your mother, take care of her. This is the sacrifice that moms make. I know I've read all the same stories you have of the bad moms and all the other kind of things, and we've got the one in the news now where the parents kill the child. I don't know how that can happen. But I know this, that we know a lady who took a kid that was found in the dumpster found in the dumpster, thrown away the baby of a mother who was a crackhead. And she threw the baby away. And today, Terry is 21 years old, or 24, 24 years old. And his mother, The woman who gave him life for 24 years is his mother. Not because of DNA. Not because of blood. Not because of gestation and all the other kind of scientific things. But because of that very thing that was demonstrated on Calvary. The love of I'm going to give you one more thing that a mother does. And I want you to hear this real clear. She terrifies the devil. She terrifies the devil. It troubles the devil when he sees a mother praying. Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saint on his knees. He doesn't care how strong you are physically, how mentally prepared you are, but when you hit your knees in prayer and you're declaring over your children the blessing of God and the blessing of God through their lives, the devil trembles. The Bible tells us in the book of James that the devil believes and trembles. I hear people tell me all the time, oh, yeah, I believe, I believe. But the devil believes in trembles. Do you? One of the best compliments I've ever heard given to my wife was from one of our children. And she says, if you want somebody to pray for, ask for my mom. I want to tell you what, moms. Being prayed. And I, there, there's someone sitting in this room today who I know had an incredible praying mother. And most of the time, life is because we had that praying mother. Or grandmother or friend, or somebody who would make the devil tremble when he saw you on your knees. You say, well, I can't get on my knees to pray. I'm not talking about a position of the body. I'm talking about a position of the heart. Today, Mother's Day, 2000. If you have your mom, hug her. If you have a daughter or a son, hug them. Don't 
doesn't. You be a mother, get hugged. If you be a father, go hug your wife or your whatever. Hug them and let them know Or tomorrow may not come for us. And that incredible amount of love is what mothers have. That they do not, you can't train them, you can't teach them, you can't give it to them. It's something that's born and birthed in them. Because they have the gene. Always remember the last one. Satan trembles when he sees a mom go to his knees. Mother's Day is a day to celebrate moms, but it's also a day to celebrate the gift of life through Jesus Christ. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity we've had today to be reminded of who mothers are and what mothers do and how much we love you and how much we love them. Today we ask that you would encourage us to demonstrate that love by three simple words. Would you turn with me, please, to page 92? We're going to sing verses 1 and 2.
shall we stand? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. Father, today we thank you for the gifts, the tithes, the offerings, the time, the talent, and the treasure so given here. God, may your Holy Spirit bless and multiply them, not only to our use, but to the back and to the givers. Father, now, in Jesus' name, we ask this blessing. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. your prayer request over to the center and we will collect them all. Jesus took pity on the people because they were like sheep without a shepherd. He 
began teaching them many things and healing the sick. The people stayed all day. The disciples told Jesus, The people are getting hungry. Let them leave so they can go out to the villages near here and buy something to eat. Jesus answered, They do not need to leave. You give them something to eat. The disciples looked around to see what food they had. The disciples answered, you thought I was. You're not a disciple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I'm not the disciple Andrew from 2,000 years ago. He's probably the newer version. The newer version, there we go, yes. <laughs> but the, the 21st century disciple Andrew, I am. No, that's not. And you're the disciple Ethan, Emma, so forth. How am I a disciple? I'm a disciple of faith. Because you follow Christ. Should follow Christ. We continue. Jesus answered, They do not need to uh, give them something to eat. The disciple looked around to see what food they had. The disciple answered, came back with a small basket. A boy gave me these five small loaves of bread and two fish. But what good is that with all these people?
Sometimes I never remind us of our flowers. Sometimes blessed to be remembered. Sometimes can never be violated by drunkenness or fear of rain. Sometimes it is where anybody is anybody from the officer of her face. Sometimes the contrary master is discussed too long and for our title. Sometimes it's a children show. It's a pet leads and force through the ages. Sometimes Jerry's sins imitate the machine by the end judge.
like to thank all of you from the bottom of my heart. Those who came, those who couldn't make it, but thought of us. Um, and I want to tell you how blessed I am to have friends. I don't know why, but, and how blessed, I'm so blessed to have wonderful children. Um, my furnace went out, I called, and my board is here. So I canceled and they came over and fixed it. Uh, what else can I say? I had so many things to say that, believe it or not, I'm gonna be quiet about it. <laughs> but I wanna thank Pastor and Stella and Jan, the organist, and uh, Debbie Jones. She brought food to my house. I was so surprised. And all the lovely cards and everything that I received. And um, I just want to say thank you to everybody. I am so blessed. Anybody else would have had to gone up there except for her. Okay. I want to remind you that tomorrow night at 7 p.m. we will be receiving the historical plaque for the front of the church. I'm sorry, the historical plaque for the front of the church. And uh, just so you know that there will be a little reception following that. So if you're into uh, sugar and punch, please come and uh, partake uh, and come and, and celebrate with us as we receive the, the plaque for the historical registry and the landmark status of our building. And I pray that you all will have the, the time and the opportunity. Uh, once we get the plaque, we'll get it up and uh, we're gonna have a service to dedicate the plaque uh, I'm not sure exactly when that will be talked about at the planning meeting, I guess, and then we'll figure out when we're going to do that. But we want to have a big celebration for that, and we want you to invite all of your friends and relatives and neighbors and aunts and uncles and, uh, you know, even the dogs if you want to. Maybe we'll, we'll do a pet blessing that day. So that means, Bill, you can come. Now, anyway... I had to get in good. Anyhow, uh, let's turn to our last song, and we will sing that, and then I will benedict us out of here. Father, we truly give you thanks for this day. God, I thank you for every testimony, every song. I thank you for every word and everything that was done. I thank you for mothers. 
And God, I ask today that your Holy Spirit would go with us as we celebrate today the day called Mother's Day. May it not just be once a year, but God, may we celebrate Mom every day. We pray this in Christ's name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen.